Okay guys, here we are, 3D printed life here. Hopefully you can hear me over the ruckus of my printer in the background. If not, I guess I'm gonna delete this video and remake it. What else can you do? Today we are gonna go over slicer settings. Yes, the fun slicer settings. There are so many, and yet, there's a lot. Well, what else to say, really? All right, so basically, you can get to the slicer settings by going to Repetier Host, clicking on the slicer tab, and hitting configure and this will open up this window after a few seconds. Now, once you're in here, first time opening it, it's gonna prompt you basic or advanced mode. Click advanced, it doesn't matter if you're not. Uh, it's just helpful to have those features at hand. So, first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna look here at layers and parameters. Uh, layer height, that's pretty self-explanatory. You don't wanna put that over 0.3. Uh, you don't really wanna go below 0.1. You can, but it just takes way too long. First layer height, always 0.2 or 0.3, your choice, but do not do 0.1 because the layers just simply won't stick. Uh, now perimeters, this is your outer walls. Uh, so when it's building up vertically, this will make two outer shells. Uh, you can increase this if you want, usually two or three works the best. Spiral vase mode, this makes it where it just makes a single outer perimeter with no infill, um, and it just constantly raises height as it goes in circles. So you only do this if you're making a one layer thick vase with no top. Otherwise, make sure that's unchecked. Horizontal shells, that's what it sounds like. Three top layers, three bottom layers. You can change these accordingly. Uh, top, you might want to go up to four if you want a smoother finish because sometimes three just doesn't cut it with lower infills. Now, down here, you don't really want to change these too much. Um, leave this one checked. You can uh, check this one if you'd like. It will... Uh, reduce the stringing and imperfections on the outer wall, but not by much and increases print time by a bit. Uh, leave the rest alone. Um, now down here, you can check to randomize starting points if you'd like. Uh, this will have it start at a different point every rotation, although in most cases that's pointless unless you're printing something like a vase, a uh, multi-layer vase where you want it to look nicer. Uh, and this one, don't ever check this one, it just, it, it sounds like it would be better, but it's really not. All right, going on to infill, this is the inner filling of your model. As you can see right here, this is a 20% infill. Um, it's just a standard diamond shape. That's the, the rectilinear. Let's bring this back up. The rectilinear thing. Uh, you can change this from zero to one, including decimals such as 0 0.2, 0 0.4, um, but uh, I'm just leaving that at one for now. And the top and bottom fill, you have all these choices. Um, the rectilinear and the line seem to work the best, although honeycomb is nice and strong, but it does use more plastic. Uh, this combined infill every layers, this will um, make it so you do multiple passes on the perimeter and then do thicker infills. So this is only really applicable if you do 0.1 millimeter layer heights, um, and you can do up to three layers um, of combined infill. Only infill where needed, that's what it sounds like. Um, it will only infill if there is a flat top section that would need support. If you have something like a triangle, it technically doesn't need any infill because it doesn't really need the support. So you can print, um, have only infill where needed and it won't infill that triangle part, but it might infill some other box part. Uh, I don't really find this setting very useful though. Um, solid infill every few layers, you can have it uh, set to do a solid layer, like it says, every few layers if you want to strengthen the print. Uh, once again, not really useful unless you're doing some very high strain objects uh, that are big and you want to save plastic. Fill angle, that's just the angle that it fills at, 45 degrees here. Um, she really shouldn't change that ever. Solid infill threshold area, that is the uh, smallest a block can be, and if it is below this size, it will make it solid on the inside. If it's above it, it will do whatever setting you have. Uh, I would recommend setting this to zero to just disable it, but I have it at 20 for some reason. Uh, and then these guys, you can just leave the same. Speed, now this is the speed of all your basic settings. Your perimeters are the outside. Small perimeters are small outside. External is um, the actual very outside layer. If you have something like um, four perimeters, it will do the first three at this speed, and then it will do the last outside at this speed. Uh, infill, that is the infill once again. Solid infill, that is um, solid layers. Top, 
obviously the top. Support is if you're using support, which I'll get to next, or in a little. Um, bridges are when it basically prints over air. You always want to have this slow around 10. And uh, gap fill is just filling very small gaps. So it's good to set that low because otherwise it will vibrate way too much. Uh, speed for non-print moves, this is just the speed it will move around uh, in between printing. So um, you can go up to about 100 on your cubes 1 and 2 up, so that's good. Other printers can go higher, some up to 3, 4, 500 millimeters per second. Uh, first layer speed, always go low, never really over 20 or 25. And then acceleration control, don't touch. Skirt and brim, a skirt is basically a perimeter around the object before you print. This just allows the nozzle to clear out um, and make sure you're getting a nice even flow once you start to print. I recommend doing one loop um, anywhere between like two and five millimeters from the object. Uh, I would only say do one height but have a minimum length of 10, which means, uh, as you can see here, it did it twice because it would, have, would not have been 10 millimeters of plastic doing one loop, so it did an extra just so it could clear it out a little better. A brim is essentially if you're printing something with a very small bottom, it will just make a flat platform of plastic and then build up, which you can break off that little platform later. Uh, it's only really necessary if you have something with a small bottom that's like an upside down V or something like that. Or not an upside down V, a regular V, upside down triangle. Support is what you need if the uh, is trying to print at an angle that is too narrow going out because it just can't print over the air that well, it will start to sag and droop and not good stuff. So these are the settings I would recommend. I haven't really played around with them much, so you will have to adjust them on your own. Um, but yeah, basically that's it, it just generates support. Um, you can enhance support for the first few layers like it says. The uh, overhang threshold, this is the angle at which it will start generating support um, with zero being, let's see what it says. Oh, zero does automatic and 90 is completely vertical. So I have it at 60, which is um, about this angle. Uh, normally it can handle up to 45 degrees just fine. So you can set this to as low as 45. That will save you some material. Um, raft basically just prints a mesh underneath the entire print. Uh, not necessary at really at all with PLA unless you find your objects are um, peeling up at the edges, then you can use this. Um, and this is the uh, support and raft material. Um, like I said, I haven't played around much with it, so I'm not sure what the optimal settings here are. Notes are just notes. Output options, you don't really need these. Um, you can have it so it does one object at a time, um, but it will only do it. You have to measure the height of your extruder head and the radius of it and put these in, and it will only do it if it can figure out a way to. Multiple extruders, obviously you don't have them. Um, if you do, well, you can figure it out then. And these advanced settings. Now, most of these you want it to touch. Um, the extrusion widths you don't touch unless you know what you're doing. I accidentally touched one because I thought I'd make it better. Ended up making it worse, I had no clue why for the longest time. So yeah, don't touch them unless you know what you're doing. Bridge flow, if you find that your bridges are kind of stringing out and they're getting cut off, you can increase this. I should actually decrease mine a little bit because I've noticed that it was drooping a little. I gotta save that for all of it now. I have so many profiles. Uh, threads, this will allow your computer to slice faster, but you do need more memory. And resolution, if your computer isn't so great, set this to something like uh, 0 0.05 or 0 0.01, and it will just simplify the models a bit. Um, even 0 0.1 if your computer's really bad. Um, so that's pretty much it for the print settings. Now when you save these, click save. You can save it as what it is by hitting OK, or you can type something new and it will save it as a new profile. As you can see, I have a metric butt-ton of profiles. So, filament settings. These are you're going to have to modify quite a bit. So I have uh, one for each of my filaments. Uh, Matter Hacker's filament. Uh, Measure the diameter of calipers, input it here, um, an average over like 10 points. Extrusion multiplier, if you're not extruding enough by default, you can increase this value a little bit and it should help. Uh, and then temperature is obviously the temperature. Um, if it, layers are separating, you gotta increase the temperature. Uh, cooling, um, this will only work if you have updated your firmware on your printer board clone. Uh, this will enable the fan when it is 
as you can see, when a layer is below 60 seconds, it will enable the fan. If it is below 15 seconds, it will slow down the print to a minimum speed of 15 millimeters per second. Uh, that is pretty standard. You can go lower than this, like 10. I just didn't for whatever reason, but you know, don't yell at me. Uh, and then finally, printer settings. This is where you set your bed size, X and Y, as well as the center of your bed where it's going to put the um, models when you add them in. And it's just helpful to know the center. I don't really actually know why, but whatever. Leave this at rip wrap. Um, leave that alone. One extruder, obviously. Um, and it is good to use this vibration limit to extend the life, life of your machine and reduce the noise when it's doing some of those crazy fast infills. Um, but again, not necessary. Um, custom G-code. This, you might have to change. Oh, this is new. I didn't realize it was updated. Now they have uh, two other G-code things you can do. But um, don't mess with them, really, unless you know what you're doing. Uh, this start G-code is what it does uh, before it starts the print, and the end is what it does after it ends. There's also some automatic G-code that gets put in. Um, you will see what is here by default. Actually, I can show you what's here by default. Home all axes, you definitely do not want this. Delete this. This will mess up your printer whenever you try to print. And I would recommend adding the G92X0Y0Z0 command. So this means that you have to move your, your printer manually or with these controls to the zero position before you start printing and it will automatically zero the axes once you start, which is very handy to prevent any crashes. And at the end, uh, you can really leave this alone, although you might want to add something to have it move, like, as you can see, oops. yes. Okay, so as you can see here, I have it moved to G1 position X0, Y0, Z80 at a speed of 5,000 millimeters per minute once it's done, and then it disables the motors. All right, pretty self-explanatory again. You just gotta learn some G-code, not too difficult. Uh, here, make sure these settings are correct. It should be 0.4 millimeters if you're using a one up or two up. Uh, retraction length, three millimeters is great for it. Uh, very little to no stringing when it's crossing over back and forth perimeters and stuff. Lift Z is not necessary if you are well calibrated, so you want to avoid using this. The speed of the extrude or the retraction is 30, that's fine. Extra length on restart, I found this just uh, helps a little when it is printing infill to make sure that the uh, first little bit sticks when it starts to flow the filament again. Uh, minimum travel, just leave that. Retract on layer change, definitely, that's good. And you don't have to wipe, but you can if you'd like. Uh, and then leave this stuff alone if you want. So that's basically it. Um, again, you can hit save, name it something new, or save it as it is. You got these guys, and then... After you make your profiles in here, you will see... Here's all your print setting profiles. Here's your printer setting profiles. And here is your extruder, your filament profiles. And then, if you choose to do so, you can click this override settings. What I'd recommend doing is, after you pick a profile, like this is the one I almost always use, hit copy print settings to override, so everything that's in this profile is going to get copied down here to these few settings. And then you can uh, um, adjust these accordingly. Say you only want 20% infill rather than solid, say you want uh, a honeycomb infill, you can go ahead and do that right here instead of having to go into your slicer settings, change the settings, save them, go back here, slice it, go back, change them again, all that stuff. It just makes it a bit easier for the most commonly changed settings. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful. I hope my printer wasn't too loud so I don't have to do all of this again. <laughs> um, if you have questions, post in the description. There's a lot to learn about slicer, but this will definitely help and a calibration video will hopefully be going up tomorrow to help you guys out with calibrating your printer. I don't know everything, but I have done my research and I hopefully can be of some help. Thank you for watching. Hopefully I can figure out how to stop this. Yes, I can. I will see you all later.